So in this video, we're going to cover six meta rules, high level rules for data visualization that I've come up with that are really kind of codifying a whole bunch of other people's work. And so, um, you know, I do not claim that these are original. I do not claim that these are my creation out of whole cloth, but it is my synthesis of what a numerous different rules kind of say, uh, codified into a very succinct form. Now, there's other rules, but these six, if you do them all, you will 90% of the time be doing an, uh, an excellent graph, all right? Now, there's some other rules, again, that we'll talk about as far as like the use of color and things like that, um, that are more in depth than the ones that are in this video, but this is kind of a great starting point, and I would expect you to have these memorized for an exam. So, the first meta rule for data visualization is that the simplest chart is usually the one that communicates the most clearly. And that's our goal, right? To communicate data clearly using pictures. Now, I say this right here, use the not wrong chart. We'll come back to this over and over again. Data visualization is not a science in that there is one proper right answer for every situation every answer is going to be on a continuum of wrong to not wrong. And what we're going to try to do is build the most not wrong uh, visualization that is appropriate for the context and the audience. All right. But the one thing we don't want to do is to chase down the cool chart. So if we're talking about categorizing, um, sorry, about, about ranking or comparing different categories of sales, um, often we turn to things like the dreaded pie chart. And, and, and I'll tell you, I used to be like no pie charts ever, but I've softened that. And we'll talk about pie charts in another video. Um, but a pie chart might be clear enough for some things, but this bubble chart is very difficult to, to compare. Who's number one, Seth or Edward? Who's number two, Edward or John or Paul? and Emily, who, coming up with the who's, what's the relative difference between these different customers is much harder in a graph like this than in a pie chart or a bar chart like this, right? So usually we're gonna wanna not try to wow people with our visualization. We want to wow them with what our data says, right? And what our analysis of the data has shown that we're then presenting visually. So don't go for points by making the coolest looking chart. Look for the chart that communicates your story the most clearly. Now the second rule, and this, is, this will be one that comes up in several different locations in, in this course, is that to always directly represent the relationship you're trying to communicate. Meaning don't leave it to the viewer to calculate it from other information. So if you're gonna show actual to budget variance, don't show actuals and budgets and ask people to compare the two lines. Actually calculate the variance and represent that. Now you could show this graph right underneath this graph as kind of a, here's kind of the, what the, the, the trend is, but here's the actual variation. You don't wanna rely on people's working memory or on their ability to hold multiple chunks of information and then manipulate those chunks of information in order to come to the understanding that you're trying to give them. The third rule is never ask viewers to compare levels of a single dimension in two dimensions. So what that means is when we're t talking about differences in sales between two customers or sales between two salesmen, we're not talking about, well, that, that's, that's differences in a single data dimension. And so we want to compare differences in length or height rather than differences in area. Let's take a look. So it's very easy to compare these two lines these two bars, right? Bar, the top bar is about twice as long as the bottom bar. I might have to be more carefully measuring to see if it's really twice, but that makes complete sense to me that the top bar is twice as big as the bottom bar, right? The bottom bar is a unit of one, the top bar is a unit of two, two units. Now compare this. Th these are also squares of unit area one and unit area two, but it's far more difficult for most people to understand that the box on the right is twice as large as the box on the left. Just comparing this 
making this ch this comparison is far easier than making this area this area comparison, right? So in general, you want to avoid asking a person to, in precise ways, calculate differences in area. Now it's really nice to use differences in area to say things like small, medium, large, or really big, really small. But usually, even if we show kind of continuous, all different sizes from very small to very large, most people's brains are gonna basically sort those into small, medium, large, rather than being able to compare one versus two. So if we're really interested in people understanding the differences in size in a precise way, we wanna compare length, not area. Now, rule four is to never use color on top of color because color and all comparison visually is not absolute. If, if you look at these five squares, the five rectangles, you can tell that your brain is telling you that they are different colors. But if you've seen the video on basic, video, uh, basic visual perception, you know that all five of these squares are exactly the same. Fifth rule is don't violate the primal instincts of your viewers, meaning up means more. Now, why does up mean more? Because every child knows that up means more. And why does every child know? Not because they've trained on how maps work. They, 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 that's not how they know. They know because when they're children, they pile up stones or they pile up blocks. And the more blocks they stack, the higher it goes. And the higher it goes, the more fun it is to knock it down, right? So everybody knows from the time they're a child that they're programmed to mean that up means more. So when you see a graph like this one, where the y-axis is inverted and down means more, it's very shocking and jarring to the user. And it's why graphs like this violate the primal instincts of your viewer. Um, don't make bigger mean less, dark, you know, more intense color mean more, less than less intense color. You know, we'll look at all kinds of different examples of this, but don't violate primal instincts of the viewers. And finally, chart with integrity. Don't lie either a mistake or intentionally. If we look at a graph like this, where we have sales by region, you see here that the X axis starts at zero and who knows who might've created this graph. But if I look at this graph, and I see that the x-axis starts at 300,000 and north now looks way better than everybody else, I can probably anticipate that it was the north sales manager that created this to make his or her region look better than the other regions. So don't tell lies by manipulating the, visually, the visual uh, properties of your data to make the numbers look different than what they are. All right, and that's it. These six rules, if you memorize them and you use them and you apply them, 90 to 95% of the time, your graphs are going to be excellent, all right? There's a lot more nuance that we have to learn, and there's certainly many more rules. But these are kind of the, you know, 80-20 kind of thing. If you follow these, like 80% 80, 80 of the stuff will be covered, and all those other rules will handle the other 20%, right? So anyway, focus on this memorize these rules for the exam, but more importantly, be ready to apply them when we start working with visualizations.